Yeah, unfortunate incident. Unfortunately, you know, we had to retire the car, and yeah, as you say, a lot has happened in that in that first start. Um, it was quite tricky out there, and um, and yeah, I hope the team can score some points today. I heard that. I, I got the information that. Esteban Ocon's got the speed, but his attitude is causing some serious problems. Acting selfishly, not thinking about the team, and dodging accountability? Those are seriously hurting his chances for a contract extension. Now, why isn't any team eager to snap him up for next season? Now, Monaco was a race with huge potential for Alpine. The team just above them in the constructor standings, Haas, was out of the picture with a double DNF. This opened up a golden opportunity for Alpine to score some serious points and climb up the standings. For a race that was so important and could have helped Alpine get a good amount of points this season, Ocon really messed up big time. He's got everything it takes to be a great driver except for his attitude and approach. And that is like the main thing that's holding him back from making real progress. Now imagine it's the Monaco Grand Prix. Lots of chances for crashes, hardly any opportunities to pass, and you're driving a car as big as a tour bus. Plus, your teammate is just ahead of you on the first lap, and you're barely outside the points. So it would be better to keep it cool and not do anything silly, right? Also, think about it. Getting some points would be a big help for the season. It would lift his mood and everyone else's. The team, the factory workers, and the fans who keep showing up. They were all rooting for him. Then why did he make that decision? because he wanted to show everyone that he couldn't finish behind his teammate no matter what. He believes that if you don't take risks, you'll never know what you're capable of. He was feeling confident about his speed and decided to make a move. Also, if the timing was right and he had the speed, he should definitely try to overtake. It's been done many times before, and it's one of the few places in Monaco where overtaking is possible. He deserves credit for carrying more speed into the corner than his teammate Gasly, and then he made his move. It's like he saw an opportunity to get ahead and didn't think twice about taking it. But unfortunately, that meant leaving Ocon with no room to maneuver. The two drivers collided, and that led to a DNF for Ocon. And to make matters worse, his car was left severely rattling after the incident. I'm okay, Lawrence. It was a, a hard launch in the air uh, and a hard landing, but you know I've, I've had worse days on, on that side of things. So I think uh, on that side of things, I'm, I'm okay. Um, obviously, it's an unfortunate incident. You know, for us to, to retire early in the race after a long race that they was gonna go later on. Um, so, um, so yeah, a tough one. We tried to basically put the car back in the garage or pull out of the fast lane to try and repair what we could repair. But unfortunately, we discovered too much uh, damage sustained. So, a chaotic first lap, and um, I hope that uh, you know. The team so, with Ocon trying this move at Monaco, where was Gasly supposed to go? Unlike other tracks with grass and runoff, Monaco has barriers on both sides. Ocon went back to the garage and got a serious talk from Bruno Femin. Meanwhile, Gasly still managed to score a valuable point for Alpine, even though his car could have been badly damaged if it hadn't been for just a couple of inches. Considering where Williams, Alpine's closest rival, finished, a double DNF for Alpine at the Monaco Grand Prix would have been catastrophic. So if Ocon and Gasly incident didn't happen, and with both Haas cars already out of the picture, a double point finish could have been likely. A huge opportunity was there, and other drivers who are more level-headed probably would have made the most of it. Now think about all the people questioning their faith in Alpine. The staff, the sponsors, suppliers, Renault themselves, and of course, the fans. This was a golden chance to show everyone that they were not done yet and that they could still climb the ranks. This could have been the start of a major turnaround. This was a great opportunity wasted by true drivers who just couldn't set aside their differences. Last year, Ocon pulled off a solid third place at the Monaco Grand Prix, a real feat. But now, with incidents like this overshadowing those triumphs, we are starting to think his reputation might already be too damaged to recover. When you say Esteban Ocon, you don't think of a speed demon who's got a bunch of wins and podiums under his belt. Instead, you think of a driver who can be a bit… out there. People are getting pretty annoyed with his antics, and it's like he's trying to be something he's not. Also, it seems like he's trying to downplay the situation and avoid accountability. It's like that his team is struggling to manage his PR and marketing as his attitude is causing frustration. As fans, we can only see what's happening publicly, but it's clear that his behavior is causing problems. Also, when you compare Alpine's team principal, Bruno Fanin, to others, you don't usually hear or see much from him. But when you do get a glimpse of him in the interviews, he comes across as pretty reserved and soft-spoken. He tends to keep a low profile, which is quite unusual for a team principal. So when the news broke that Famine was absolutely furious and had a serious talk with Ocon, it's no surprise that it would have sounded really intimidating. We've seen team principals like Toto Wolf, who have a reputation for blowing their tops and smashing headsets. But when it comes to those who are truly unhinged, they are often the ones you least expect. The quiet ones, who keep their emotions bottled up, can be the most terrifying because they're not as predictable. 
They're the ones who can surprise you with a meltdown or a big meltdown, and that's what makes them truly psychotic. Famine spoke to Canal Plus, saying that Esteban's aggressive attack on Ocon was completely unacceptable. He made it clear that there would be consequences for what happened and that they'd have to make a tough decision soon. Famine didn't quite specify what that decision would be, but he left it open to guess. This could not be good for Ocon because he might not know how to deal with the consequences. It's no surprise that he looked worried and didn't want to answer some questions afterwards. Well, Ocon got a bit of a penalty, 10 seconds off his time, and then later a 5-spot grid penalty for the Canadian Grand Prix. That's not ideal, but we think this might be just the beginning of this story. Bruno Femi, Alpine's boss, was having a chat with young driver Jack Duhon, and we think Femin might have been asking Duhon to bring his Alpine branded crash helmet to Canada, but it's probably more than just a friendly request. It's probably a way for Femin to remind Ocon to behave. We haven't seen this kind of mess in a while, and despite the bad PR for Alpine, maybe it's best to keep Ocon in his seat. But Ocon doesn't seem too focused on securing his spot at Alpine for next season. He keeps talking about his connections to Mercedes and his relationship with Toto Wolff, even mentioning talks with other teams. It's easy to understand why Alpine might feel that way if Ocon doesn't want to stay. He should leave, especially since there are many other drivers eager for the opportunity. Maybe the team is looking to the future with a lineup of Gasly and Duhon, which could be a fresh start for them. If Ocon and Alpine part ways after this season, it begs the question, where does Ocon go next? What will happen to him? Will he even have a spot on the grid? Based on his undeniable talent, Ocon should be able to secure a seat somewhere else. However, it's the baggage of drama, selfishness, and bad attitude that's constantly trailing behind him, posing a threat to his career. Once promising, his career now hangs in the balance. In many areas of life, if you're not a team player, if you don't fit into the environment, and if you end up affecting the performance of those around you, you're out, whether you're in an office or on the F1 track. So at the moment, Ocon isn't really coming across as someone who can bring a positive change to any team he's in. It was quite a shock to hear that Haas was even considering contract negotiations with him, especially since they've been making strides lately. But despite their progress, there's still this lingering sense of instability with Haas. Their drivers aren't saints either. They've got Magnussen, who can be a bit of a loose cannon sometimes, but at least he seems to know his boundaries. If Ocon were to join Haas, he might extend his career a bit, but it could cause trouble for the team, especially if his teammate is competitive too. We are starting to wonder if this might be the beginning of the end for Ocon, and it feels like Ocon cares more about his own ranking than the team's. Drivers should look out for themselves, but if they focus on teamwork, their own position should get better naturally. Right now, Ocon is in 16th place with just one point. Even though one more point in Monaco wouldn't have helped him much, it would have been good for Alpine. Sadly, we think Ocon's reputation and how much people want him might be beyond fixing now. And that wraps it up. Now, what do you think? Do drop your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video for more such content. Make sure to hit that notification bell so you never miss any updates. Until next time, stay awesome, and we will be back with another one.